So what do you do after modeling or sculpting? Most newbies jump right into texturing. Hmm. That's odd. One guy just asked me, so what's the difference between UV mapping and texturing? And that's what we will be looking into today. UV mapping might seem very intimidating in the beginning, but I'm going to tell you what. That's how you set up your objects and characters for smooth, beautiful texturing. Okay, let's talk about UV mapping and some great softwares, both paid and free, for creating high-quality quick maps for texturing. UV mapping simply lets you control exactly where the texture is placed on the model. By default, texture coordinates are set to generated, which kind of just lets you use the object's coordinate and dumps the texture from one side. Using UVs allows you to fold the model out flat and lay the textures on them, which wraps nicely in 3D. A point in 3D space is expressed as X, Y, and Z. Every part of an object can be expressed with the X, Y, and Z coordinate. Now, texturing is a bit different because you will need more than just X, Y, and Z. And that's where U, V, and W set in. But the W isn't really needed, so we only maintain the U and V. UV mapping. UV coordinate maps are always flat. Every point on every face of the object can be assigned any coordinate of your own choice. When you UV unwrap an object, what you're actually doing is assigning what the UV coordinate of each face will be. Now, the flat coordinate face generated must correspond to a flat polygon located anywhere you like it to be and oriented in any direction. They can overlap too if you wish. For instance, if you like the same feature, to show up in several places, just overlap several polygons over the same places on the source UV map where the feature occurs. So, in conclusion, texturing is not the same as UV mapping, but if you are going to use a texture, there has to be a UV map because textures are flat and they are applied to the flat faces of the object based on their flat UV coordinate. Strictly speaking, you can actually control this. Even if you don't intend to texture a model, many modern real-time engines such as Unreal Engine and Unity need your assets to be UV unwrapped to perform some of its light baking. Now that the basic concept of UV maps has been outlined, we can dive into the more intermediate part of UV unwrapping, namely seams. Seams are an unfortunate and unavoidable side effect of flattening any 3D geometry. A seam is a part of the mesh that has to be split to be able to convert the 3D mesh into a 2D UV map. UV unwrapping is always a compromise of causing a little distortion to the wireframe as possible, while also keeping seams to a minimum. Distortion in terms of a UV map is how much the shape and size of the polygon have had to change to accommodate the flattening process. Too much distortion will affect the way details are displayed on the final model. As you can see, there is no distortion to the polygon based on how the cube was unwrapped in this image. This is easy to tell by applying a basic checkered texture. If the checker pattern isn't stretched, then you've avoid distortion in your unwrap. However, the downside to this method of just splitting all your polygons apart is the number of seams it produces. The cube on the left has the UV seams highlighted in green. You can see the pattern doesn't line up as it moves around the edges. This can become a problem in more complex meshes. So you need to practice and get smart with your seam placement. This is an example of what happens if you heavily distort your polygons in your UV unwrap. The texture on this cube is no different than the previous example, but as you can see, it has been stretched and pulled out of shape. However, the lack of seam does mean that the pattern lines up and follows around the edges of the cube, but the payoff is not worth the sacrifice in this instance. The obvious answer is to find a balance between the two. In this image, you can see that the checker pattern is preserved and we have some nice continuous edges that flow around the front of the cube. Just like any other work, I would advise you practice more on wrappings in order to know the best places to hide your seams, just to make them less noticeable. Okay, let's end this video with a couple of UV mapping softwares. My number one UV unwrapping tool would be 3D Code. 3D Code isn't free and it isn't expensive as well. It lies in between a poor and an average pocket. 
3D code works perfectly with both high polygon and low poly models. There are two ways to create UV map in 3D code, auto and manual. I've shared a link in my description box that leads to a complete UV mapping tutorial using 3D code. My second software will be Substance Painter, of course. It's not free and it's not cheap. I think a guy once shared with me how to get a permanent license for Substance Painter on Steam. Can't really confirm that, but if all you want to do as a beginner is simply UV unwrap, then you should try Blender. Blender is completely free and does a great job. I honestly wouldn't have mentioned Blender because Blender 2.8 still had issues with unwrapping, which in turn affected the edges of your sculpt, character, or object. But I'm sure it should be fixed by now. It's been quite some time since I used Blender, so I can't really confirm that. Anybody with the latest news on Blender UV mapping fix can share it in the comment section below. Aside the minor issues, Blender is top-notch and completely free. Even expensive softwares like 3ds Max have issues, so let's spare Blender the negative. You can't complain too much since you aren't paying too much. Okay, if you love this video, then a sub to my channel will be awesome. Peace out.